Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Oh boy, am I excited to see you right in front of the TV today. You must be really eager to learn something new today, right? Well, me too. I love your enthusiasm and keenness for knowledge. And I can assure you, you are watching the right channel now. Let me introduce myself. I am Nur Halina binti Abdul Rahman from Sekolah Kebangsaan Putrajaya Persin 181. But you can just call me Puan Nina, ya? With me today is Puan Shamila Nair, our sign language interpreter from SKPK Jalan Peel. All right now, today we will be learning something really interesting for science year three subject. Let's see if you can take a guess. It has got something to do with the things that we eat and what actually happens to them. Yes, you're right. We are going to learn about food digestion. Okay, now I need you to get your textbook, activity book and also your science journal ready. All set? Great! Hmm, have you ever wondered what happens to all the food that we eat? Where does all the food go? I'm sure you have learned about the seven classes of food. Do you still remember? Carbohydrate, protein, fats, minerals, vitamins, fiber, and also water. And so, how does our body absorb all these nutrients from the food that we eat? From the nasi lemak, vegetable soup, pepperoni pizza, yogurt drink. Do you have any idea how? In today's lesson, we will get to know what actually happens to the food that we eat. And as a bonus, we will get to do a very interesting activity. Do you want to know what it is? We are going to simulate a process on how feces is made. You know what feces is, right? The brownish thingy that comes out from our... <laughs> well, I can't wait! Now, shall we begin our food digestion lesson? Awesome! Before we begin, let us look at our learning objectives for today's lesson. So let's have a look at this slide. These are the learning objectives that we need to attain by the end of this show today. I hope everyone is ready. Minds on, hands on, and hearts on. Great! Come on, let's do this! My dears, let's think for a moment. We take in food every day. Most of the time, more than twice or three times a day. And we eat a variety of food. Have you ever wondered how much food we eat every single day? I don't mean how much calories, but how much food. If we put all the food we eat for a day on a table, how much space would it take? Now, when you imagine all the food that you actually put inside your mouth, do you see your body as a machine that processes all the food you consume? Because when you think about it, where do all the food disappear after you eat? Therefore, this is what we are going to do today. We are going to explore the journey of the food we eat in an expedition called food digestion. First, let us look at the outline of today's lesson. We will first take a look at the path 
the flow of food inside our body. Next, we are going to experience the journey of the food itself, that is, the digestion process. And finally, we will discuss some actions or habits that are bad for digestion. Now, let's jump to the first segment, shall we? Here we go. My dear pupils, now let's imagine that our body is a map. And before we embark into our journey to find out where our food goes, let us take a look at our body map and see which path is taken. Here it is. Look at this diagram. It shows the insides of our body. You do realize that our body holds a complex yet amazing system that functions wonderfully without we ourselves even noticing. It's like an organic machine that works non-stop 24-7 every day, every minute and every second since we're inside our mother's womb right until the day we die. So I hope you will understand why it is important for us to eat a balanced diet and avoid unhealthy food. It all boils down to the energy for your bodily functions to run smoothly. Okay now, look here. This is the flow of food inside our body. First, the mouth. Then goes down through the esophagus. Come, say it with me. Esophagus. Next, into the stomach. Stomach. From the stomach, the food goes into the intestine. Intestine. And finally, the anus, where the food exits the body. Anus. Okay, get it? Let's repeat. Mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestine, and anus. Great job, everyone. Now that all of you have learned the five body parts in which our food flows through, it is time to go deeper into the process itself. Are you ready, boys and girls? Awesome! Let's start with the very beginning of the digestive system, what it actually does. Digestion is a process to break down food into smaller pieces so that its nutrients can be absorbed by our body. Imagine a piece of pizza, for example. The digestion process helps to break down the pizza so that all of its nutrients can be made into use inside our body. Can you name some of the nutrients in a piece of pizza? Yes, carbohydrate from the pizza bread, protein, minerals, vitamins, fiber, and fats from the cheese and the meat and the sauces and other condiments on top. And you have previously learned about teeth, remember? How many types of teeth are there? Can you name them and state their functions as well? Come, let's try. I'll guide you. Incisors. Incisors are used to cut food. Yes, good. And we also have canines to tear food. And last but not least, the molars to grind all the food inside our mouth. So now, can you put two and two together? Can you now see the bigger picture here? Okay, 
Let's take a step back. Let's begin from where it all started. The moment when you start to eat. You open your mouth and then... Yes, your incisor teeth will cut the food first into smaller chunks. You can't fit in a whole pizza into your mouth, right? So, the incisors will cut your food. And the canines will help to tear the crust of the pizza, for example. Once inside your mouth, your molar teeth will function like a food processor, grinding all your food. But wait! There are other things in your mouth that will help break the food. Can you guess? Yes, your tongue, of course. Your tongue will help to push the food around while your molars are chewing and grinding it. And your saliva. Yes, saliva. Saliva is the watery substance inside your mouth. Saliva helps to moisten the food and also breaks down carbohydrates with the enzymes it contains. So now you know that the digestion process begins inside your mouth. Yup, way before food even reaches the stomach. Okay, what happens next? When the food has been grinded properly, the tongue will then push the chewed food to the throat to be swallowed. Next, the food will go through the esophagus. Now, there are two pipes or tubes that are connected to your mouth. One is for the air that we breathe in and breathe out. And the other one is for food, the esophagus. So, we must not swallow our food too fast or it might get into the wrong canal. Food that goes through esophagus will reach the stomach. In the stomach, food will be mashed up and churned with some liquids and digestive juices, including stomach acid. During this time, proteins will be digested. Food usually stays for hours inside our stomach for this process to complete. And this will then produce a frothy liquid that was once the food that we eat. It will be then sent from the stomach into the small intestine. Our liver produces a liquid called bile. Bile is stored in our gallbladder and secreted into the small intestine. Bile helps in food digestion by breaking down fats from our food. Some fats contain vitamins that are soluble in it. Minerals and other vitamins do not need to be broken down. They are straight away absorbed in our small intestine. Our pancreas supplies enzymes that help to complete food digestion in the small intestine. Now, what we need to understand is, food digestion is completed in the small intestine. That means, all nutrients are finally absorbed into our body, transported by blood in the small intestine. Inside our small intestine, there are these tiny villi, which are actually the lining of the small intestine itself, folded into millions of tiny fingers. Imagine villi is like the strands on our carpet. Each villus contains blood vessels and a few other things that absorbs nutrients from the food that flows into the small intestine. Do you know that our small intestine 
can be up to seven meters long. Oh, wow! As our food goes through our small intestine, all the nutrients will be absorbed by the villi. So the mass of food becomes smaller and smaller. The leftovers will then enter our large intestine. These leftovers do not contain any more nutrients. Instead, they consist of fibers, water, and also dead cells. As they move along our large intestine, water will be drained out through its wall. What is left is a soft mass called stool or feces. And then this stool will reach our rectum and then to the anus when it's time to expel the waste. The byproduct of the digestive system will exit through the anus as feces or stool. Aha, uh -huh, there you have it. Our food journey from mouth to the anus. <laughs> Okay, everyone, remember that I promised you earlier on? Yes, we are going to simulate this digestion process, yeah? You are going to see how a typical food becomes stool right in front of your eyes. In simulation, I mean. Are you ready for that, boys and girls? Awesome! Let's go! Okay now, let's start with our food digestion hands-on activity. I really hope you will try this at home, yeah? With your parents' permission, of course. Now, before we start, let's see what are the things that we need. First of all, you need a clear space, of course. You may line your table with a plastic sheet because it is going to get a little bit messy. But messy is fun, right? Next, you need some real food to show what really is going to happen. Here I have some biscuits and also a banana. Yums! We will also need a pair of scissors, a bowl, a cup of water and a pestle. You can use other blunt objects if you like to replace the pestle. You can use the back of a spoon perhaps. All this will simulate your mouth. Okay now, next is a transparent tube. Here I will be using the plastic lining for ice cream Malaysia. You need to snip off the bottom part first. This tube will represent your esophagus. And you will also need a funnel to make the transfer easier. After that, you will need a zipper bag like this. And inside this zipper bag, add some orange juice in it. The zipper bag is your stomach while the orange juice is your stomach acid. Now, the next thing you need is a little bit tricky. You need one thin stocking that women usually wear. A little bit of a reminder, please do not just take your mom's stocking from her drawers, yeah? Ask first. Maybe there is one that has lost its pair that your mom can give. The thin stocking represents our small intestine. Next, a jar of red liquid. It can be thin rose syrup or just plain water with a few drops of red food colorant. This will represent our bloodstream. And last but not least is a paper cup. And cut out a small hole at the bottom of the cup. 
This will represent your large intestine, while the hole down here will be the anus. Okay, now that we're all set, let's start. First, we need to cut the food with scissors. Do not break it with your hands. Why? Because the scissors actually represent your upper and lower incisors, your front teeth. Okay, this is how you put your food inside your mouth. Cut it. You need to cut the food with your incisors. Just cut it. Okay, here I have some banana. I'm gonna add in more biscuits. Now, let's pound or grind the food using this pestle. Add in some plain water. The pestle is your molar teeth. Grind the food until it is fairly fine. Mm. Grind it. Imagine this is inside your mouth. The molar teeth is grinding your food with the help of saliva. Okay, now we will transfer this food to the esophagus panel. We use the plastic lining here to represent the food pipe. Ooh, can you see that? Okay, and place your zipper bag at the other end of the esophagus. The zipper bag is your stomach. Oh, see it's going down. I told you it's going to get messy. Okay, let's push it down. Okay. Yay, see? Food from your mouth goes into the esophagus and into the stomach. Okay. See how the food goes? Alright. Okay, now we're going to add some orange juice into the zipper bag. Okay? Remember, the orange juice represents the stomach acid. So we're going to add in some orange juice. So, this is inside your stomach. Okay, so this is going to be the fun part. Squish your food. Squish it. Because this is representing the process of further grinding and churning of food inside the stomach. Squish, squish, squish. Okay, now let's continue by transferring the food from the stomach into the small intestine. Remember, the thin stocking is your small intestine. Okay, you may put your small intestine, the thin stocking, inside a bottle to prevent spills and such. 
Now, while doing this, I want you to remember the facts about small intestine. On the inside of the small intestine lies thousands, if not millions, of small projections called villi. Just like the strands of a carpet, or if you have eaten chicken tripe, or babat, or perut ayam, the villi are something like that. And in each villus, there are food, blood, there are blood vessels and other stuff that absorbs all the nutrients from the food. Okay. Here, we are going to dip the stocking into the red liquid. Ah, this gesture is only to simulate how nutrients from the small intestine will go into the blood flow. And from the blood, the nutrients will be taken to all parts of our body. So now look at the colour of the red liquid. It has become a bit murky, right? It is because of the nutrients that have been absorbed into the blood. Now let's give a little squeeze to the stocking here. Next, we are going to transfer the leftover food to the paper cup. Why do I say leftover? Because nutrient absorption has completed in the small intestine. What's left here are actually fiber, some water and also dead cells. You need to know that our body does not digest fibre. Fibre is important in our diet to maintain good bowel health. That means eating fibre will prevent you from getting constipation. Fibre will absorb water, thus solidify our stool or feces. Yes, feces. You are about to watch the process of making feces here. Let's get our toilet bowl ready. Now, push the inside of the paper cup. Ah, here they are. Can you see the feces? Ooh, isn't that amazing? You have witnessed the simulation of digestion from the moment we eat our food right until it exits. From the body. Whoa! That's the feces, everyone. And the hole there is your anus. Ah. Okay. Don't forget to try this, okay? You may experience uh, experiment with other types of food and see whether there will be a change in the color of the feces. Okay, now. Let's clean ourselves and get back to our lesson. We have one more part to settle. Okay everyone, this will be the last segment for today's lesson. We will discuss a few actions that you should avoid to make sure that your food digestion will not get disrupted. My first question, how do you eat your food? What I mean is, what is your eating position? Yes, we must sit down properly when we're about to have our meal. Can you imagine eating a piece of pizza while running and jumping? What is going to happen? Yes, you might choke and vomit or throw up. Probably the food inside your stomach or even the esophagus goes back up again because of the intense body movements. Even if you're done eating a meal, you should wait 3 to 4 hours before you run or exercise. You can start exercising after 30 minutes of eating light snacks though. Okay now. Second situation, 
What happens if we eat too quickly? Let's say you're late for something, but you must eat because you're hungry. And the food is really yummy. So what do you do? Putting as much food into your mouth as you can in the shortest time possible. <sighs> what might happen if you do that? Yes, you might choke and vomit too. Probably because the chewed food that is sent to the esophagus from the throat gets into the windpipe. <sighs> yes, trachea or windpipe is a tube only for channeling air into or from our lungs in the breathing process. And you might also get a stomach ache because of this. Probably because with rigorous movements, the churning and grinding of food process in the stomach gets disrupted sorely. So we definitely do not want that to happen, right? The same goes if we are not focused when eating. Maybe because we're talking non-stop while eating, we might choke if we do that. Therefore, dear pupils, eat slowly while sitting down properly. Enjoy your food. Chew as much as you can. Make sure the food is small enough to fit into your esophagus. You do not want to hurt your esophagus, of course. Do not hastily push down big chunks of food down your throat. It will make digestion take a longer time to complete. Okay, everyone. Let's wrap up our lesson today with a little bit of a recap. First, the flow of food. It starts from the mouth, then into the esophagus, and then into the stomach. From the stomach, food will flow into the small intestine, and then the large intestine. And finally, undigested food will exit through the anus. Yay! Good job! Next, remember, food digestion begins in the mouth itself. Our teeth, tongue and saliva help to break down food into smaller pieces. Then it gets into the esophagus and into the stomach. In the stomach, the food will continue being broken down into even smaller pieces before they get to send to the small intestine. Nutrients from food, protein, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals, and also fats are absorbed into the blood in the small intestine by the tiny projections called villi. And then, the undigested food will then travel from the large intestine into the anus where it will exit as feces or also known as stools. Okay, that's it everyone. We have concluded our lesson for today. I sincerely hope you are now well aware of what's happening to the food that you eat. One word of advice. Please eat right. Avoid junk food, unhealthy food. Remember that your body is not, is not a garbage bin. Think before you put anything in your mouth because it will end up being sent to your whole body or might harm your insides if they're junk. You might not realize if junk pieces accumulate in your body for years and might cause your health in years to come. You must take care of your own body. Appreciate and be grateful for this gift from the Almighty. Okay everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. 
hope to see you again soon. Goodbye!